we're here with another episode and this week we are going to talk about what fitness 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 whole fitness. Chinese in my mouth <laughs> <laughs> fitness beer down my mouth <laughs> yeah no true we having a Chinese tonight you told me the other day that we're having Chinese tonight so for all you listeners we're having Chinese tonight mm. there we are anyway fitness anyway, yes. um obviously there's well, fitness is like an umbrella term. It's a very it? broad term. Isn't you've it? got you've got muscular endurance. You've got cardiovascular fitness. You've got yeah, I suppose aerobic and anaerobic fitness, haven't you? Yeah. Um, mm. Let's keep it broad. Let's let's talk about team sports. Let's mm. let's not talk about you know endurance, marathon, triathlon, mm. Ironman sort of stuff. Let's yeah. talk about a match. Um, a team sport. A team sport. Well, that's why we're here anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Coincidentally, I had a, a client who I'm uh, trying to teach back into rugby. He's had a bit of time off rugby and he's getting back into it. So we're just, you know, I'm teaching him obviously the S&C side of things, but then also including some skills in there as well. And yeah. today I did um, an, uh, a lactate threshold sort of fitness session and then immediately went into low level skills mm-hmm. to do those skills under fatigue and that's a big big aspect of Part fitness when it comes to game day just being able to complete, execute your skills execute your st- whilst yeah, you're tired whilst you're tired mm. or i suppose so you're not tired yeah because you're fitter yeah. so you're not actually under fatigue are you mm. your ability to uh i suppose sustain energy for longer mm. because you're better in practice to then yeah do those skills yeah nice um it's quite i i would argue that if um if you're you you can get away with being fitter the fittest on the pitch not necessarily the best skills wise but if you're the fittest you're going to give yourself more opportunities therefore you you know you're going to outperform a lot of the players on the pitch if you yeah. are the fittest there if you can keep going that. and keep going and mm. keep going, I suppose you're always going to be in the correct position mm-hmm. because you're not going to be lagging behind or walking when you need to be yeah. getting in those positions. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's a good sort of description of it. Uh-huh. Um, and I think it's 99 times, that, like, well, all team sports basically is going to have a combination of different types of fitness. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Yeah, it's able to being able to, you know, get around the pitch um, for the whole match and create these opportunities for yourself. But it's also, um, you know, what type of fitness sort of is it within that bracket? So you've got aerobic fitness, which is yeah. a sort of a longer lasting, ste- more steady state kind of fitness. Yeah. Um, so things like you know just jogging. So if you're a football player, just jog generally jogging around the pitch moving around, getting like finding some space. Mm-hmm. Aerobic meaning you're you're taking in oxygen. That's yeah. the air side of things. Yeah, you're so providing your muscles with oxygen because you're doing things at a lower intensity and breathing deeply. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you've got the Yeah. And then you've got anaerobic fitness, which is without air. So where you're working at an intensity that you cannot quickly uh, or you can't sufficiently get oxygen in and in circulating around your body quickly enough and efficiently enough and therefore you can't sustain that for Mm -hmm. very long Um, and obviously the fitter your or the better your anaerobic system is the longer you can last in that kind of an intensity Um, so anaerobic work essentially your your body has an ability to to exercise at a high threshold Um, and like max said you're, you're not taking in enough oxygen that your muscles require to break down um, energy resources to provide that energy and, you know, do the activity. Um, and as a consequence, you, you build up oxygen debt, which produces lactic, lactic acid. And I suppose that's where you were going with your lactic threshold training with your... Mm. Yeah. With um, your, what are they called, um, clients? <laughs> Jesus. It's <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I think as a team sports player, it's important to have to work on both of those aspects. Mm -hmm. Um, I might have mentioned in one of the other episodes that we did um, that 
you know, depending on what portion of your your season or off season you're in, um, you might not necessarily you'll, you'll you might have to focus on one more than the other. So, for example, mid season, you know, when you've got back to back games, generally you're going to have match fitness because you're playing mm-hmm. consistently and frequently. Excuse me, and. Um, However, yeah, so you're naturally going to have that aerobic and anaerobic, anaerobic capacity. Um, but going into the season, sort of pre-season or off-season, or if you've come back from an injury, then it's something you, you need might to have build to that up. You have to build that up, definitely. So, obviously, you you mentioned you were you were doing some lactate training with your client. Mm. What what's the purpose of that? What's and what does it entail? So the, why, why are you doing that? There are different like ways that you can train this. So for for what we were doing, um, we were doing repeated sprints. We were doing 50 meter sprints mm-hmm. and he had 30 seconds to get back to his start line. So he had to, you know, do his do a sprint. And then as soon as he crossed that line, 30 seconds starts and he's got to make his way back to where he started to then go again as soon as the 30 seconds are up. Mm-hmm. Um I gave him a target of hitting eight reps. The bug's like, you know, only just getting back into things. So um, I gave him, you know, a target of eight reps. Um, he managed to get seven and a half out. Um, and then we went again after a little bit more rest. But it's something that an, at most anaerobic sort of sessions that you do are horrible. I, I'd argue that it's way worse than any kind of anaerobic mm-hmm. fitness. Um, anaerobic fitness. Sorry, yeah, uh, yeah, aerobic fitness, um, because you do get a build up of lactic acid, um, and it feels like acidic. It feels like your muscles, muscles are burning. Are burning. Yeah. You'll know it's more than anyone being a CrossFit wanker, um, but because th- you're doing, you know, decent weight, high repetitions, yeah. but quickly as well. Very minimal rest. Minimal yeah. rest, and um, so you do get this build up. Um, Interestingly, it's called lactic acid, mm-hmm. um, but lactate is uh, an alkaline um, and is supposed to actually, uh, what's the word? Buffer. Buffer the acidity that's in your muscle. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, lactic acid, when you say you've got a buildup of lactic acid, you've actually got a buildup of you know hydrogen atoms. Ions. Which is ions. Yeah. You, you can keep correcting me <laughs> when I get it wrong. Um, yeah, you get a, a buildup of hydrogen uh, ions, which creates this acidity, could have positive uh, charge, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and then you're you've got this um, lactate, lactic um, sort of buffer, which kind of has the opposite effects and bring it back yeah. to a neutral um, or a normal um, acidity. Yeah, because because your your blood essentially is is a neutral pH. I, I, I obviously don't know what what level of listeners we have here, but you, you've got acid, you've got alkaline, and you've got a neutral pH. And when, as Max said, when you exercise intensely, um, you build up those hydrogen ions. And hydrogen ions, the more they build up, become more and more acidic, which obviously has a, a negative effect on your muscles. It's it inhibits contractions. That's why when you when you get that build up of lactate or or hydrogen ions you um you can feel it in your legs it it feels acidic but also you really struggle to to move them don't you you know when when someone tells you to sprint again and your legs just feel like jelly they just can't work Mm -hmm. can't function yeah so so your body that's bad for your body it can interfere with neurons and, and electrical charges um and and yeah those the firing of those motor neurons so your body has a natural buffering system and that's what you just mentioned mm. it's like a safety mechanism so you're building up all this acid this hydrogen um and the lactate is buffering that uh and, and bringing that back down to a, to a safe level so yeah like you said mm. it's not actually lactic acid yeah but it's that build up of hydrogen ions yeah um, so what yeah so th- essentially you're in your training with your clients, you're you're putting them through anaerobic mm. work at a high intensity. Yeah. Is that is that so? The purpose of training, how we, 
Do you build on that session by session? Yeah, or you, you can. What you do, like, like in you know in your gym work, you know you're going to build the intensity over a period of time, and we're using that periodization. Um, with what we were trying to achieve today, for example, was it was a bit of an introduction. You know, he's he's been doing his mm -hmm. lot more. At, uh, sorry. He's been doing his aerobic work outside of seeing me because I'm not going to watch him run 5k am I? So yeah. there's no point in that. So um, he, he's worked on that side of things. He's, he's growing a competence in that. Um, and now we're ramping up the intensity and I think it's a good opportunity for us to do that because mm -hmm. they're usually shorter sessions than an aerobic session. Uh, so a shorter period of time, it's higher intensity. So it gives us the opportunity to do that. And then... Uh, link that up with, like I mentioned, you know, performing a skill. For example, what we did was just basic short distance, but accurate passes, just getting absolute perfect technique with his passing mm -hmm. under that fatigue, um, which was interesting because obviously it will, you will have a drop in performance when you're um, like in terms of that, performing that skill under fatigue. Yeah. Um, but it was interesting how how he reacted to it um when because like it was tough it was intense yeah um, and he was i, I know the sessions the it, I, like, I remember yeah yeah he was holding him you know trying to you know throw up and uh -huh. that, but um i thought he did pretty well i think there's areas of improvement but um it's it was a tough session it's not nice it's mm -hmm. something that sounds quite easy like you know, sprint hundred uh, yeah. sorry, sprint fifty meters, and then you've got thirty seconds to get back. Like it doesn't sound too bad, yeah. Because you're going. I was kind of encouraging him to try and get to as high velocity as possible. Mm -hmm. So you just get up to your top speed and just hold it until you get to that fifty meter mark. Wow. Um. So and because you're working at that high intensity, you know, ninety percent of your, you know, maximum velocity for most reps, um. And then you get to a point where you just go, yeah, and you fall off the cliff, edge of the cliff, and it's all of a sudden like the hardest thing in the world. Like, um, I think it, it's weird because those sessions, if anyone's ever done them, they the first ones back literally do make you want to vomit, don't they? Yeah, they they yeah, yeah. really do put you through your paces, and you come back to it a week later, and if you do the same amount of reps. Mm. whatever it genuinely you feel yeah. an improvement yeah you feel oh, i'm not as fatigued i'm not as nauseous mm. and if you i suppose if you keep doing that then then it does get easier i think so there is quite a like a, a technical side of things with these for example that session that we had and i, I did talk, tell them about this was um you kind of grow a almost like your own technique and you work out the easiest way of doing doing the, the, the session. Um, for example, what he was doing, he was, he was nailing the 50 meters, um, but then he didn't have much of it, like a quick turnaround. So he would slowly decelerate, decelerate and mm -hmm. then he'd you know, do a slow turnaround and then he'd have to do a little jog back. Whereas, you know, someone who's more experienced perhaps would have done a bit of a harder deceleration after the 50, so he's not have to you know, mm -hmm. work is hard to get back he's just got to do that hard decelerate and then uh, and then work and it's just like little technical things which can make it easier in the long run yeah um you know so for going from session one to session two and you all like you do feel a little bit better a lot of the time it is more technical mm -hmm. okay um but I, exactly like you said um you you also do get quite like better quicker like you do get fitter quite quick um and yeah, it can be as simple as, you know, an actual muscle adaptation or a neural ad adaptation, um, but it can also be, you know, a hormone secretion adaptation. Mm -hmm. it, well, it, it any be... any sort of stress on your body has, you know, it's like, it's like, is it one of the laws of physics? You know, any action has an equal and mm -hmm. opposite reaction, but like if you put a stress on something, it will adapt. Yeah. So if you're putting your body through lots of high lactate work or high you know acid building work mm. your body will get better at buffering mm. um you've got an enzyme in your body called lactate dehydrogenase there you are a bit of science did my uh thesis on that um but essentially when you build up 
lots of lactate, you upregulate the amount of enzymes your your cells produce, so your muscle cells um, would produce, and therefore your ability to break down lactic acid into I think it goes into pyruvate or something, which is part anyway. It's that's too sciencey, but it it goes into like part of that cell um, or that energy process again. But your ability to clear that that harmful substance is massively better. It's like tuning a car. You know, you can get from A to B a lot quicker. Um, so I suppose repeatedly putting yourself in that position when you've got high lactate will definitely upregulate things and yeah. improve your clearance, which then I suppose when it comes to game day, which is what we're all doing this for, you know, it's what yeah. you're training, your ability to buffer that lactic acid and, and go for longer or even get back to your normal mm. is a lot, lot better. Yeah, 100%. And I think what, you know, the area that I sort of specialise in is more like biomechanics and so on but mm -hmm. um, I, I also love the kind of uh, analytics of you know working out okay in a game how many sprints am I doing what's my recovery between those sprints mm -hmm. how many accelerations am I doing how many decelerations am I doing blah 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 and then making the training session fit around those statistics right um, and so what we were doing today was you know that perfect balance of okay we're going to do a hard you know hard bit of work here with that 30 second recovery which isn't it's recovery but you still got to jog, jog back yeah. or more or less you, it's not it's not just a stroll back to the start it's a bit of a jog so you're continuously going from this like high intensity uh, thing which can simulate you know a line break in rugby or you know you've got to uh, chase I'm... someone down <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> You're just standing in the middle, distributing lovely Catch nice pass. passes. Yeah, um, and that's what we were trying to achieve. And it's all about making the session as specific to a game day as possible, if not more intense. Yeah. Because if you're making the sessions more intense, then it makes game day a bit easier. Um, and yeah, so it it has these sort of physiological adaptations, like mm -hmm. you mentioned just now. Um, you know, you can increase. The amount of alveoli in your muscle, uh, in your muscles, in your lungs, um, which again is anaerobic, but it can help with the process and keep you going for that a little bit longer. Yeah, you know, you can get an increase in blood vessels and and um, uh, and that in your muscles, and and it just helps the whole circulatory process mm -hmm. of um, oxygen. And then also you've got you know a better capacity to hold glycogen and. And so on. Those energy reserves in your muscles. Energy reserves in your muscles are, are increased, and um, yeah, well, yeah, because well, I suppose when you're doing those high intensity pieces of well, when you're sprinting, you you're mainly using those fast twitch muscle fibers, aren't you? Which mm. are the the bigger, larger cross sectional muscles, and obviously the the bigger they are, the more energy they require. Mm. So you know needs more blood flow into it not only to provide the muscles with oxygen and um, glycogen but also you need to clear that all the all the negative all the dangerous harmful toxic stuff that your muscles are producing i think that's a pretty good a good round off yeah. nice hope you enjoyed that one today guys we've enjoyed the san miguel mm. and we'll see you next time thanks for listening